Hi, George here. We'll be using the Photoshop Elements Clone Stamp tool to remove all these people in the background and turn this picture into that picture. Okay, start off with the basic image. I'll just get rid of these two layers up here. And here's the base image. Now, whenever I do any kind of photo retouching like this, I always make a duplicate of the background layer. So go over where it says background, right click and choose duplicate layer and choose OK. And then just hide that background as a safety. Now, whenever you're doing this kind of photo retouching, you need to decide which technique you want to use and how you want to work with that. I'll frequently take all the foreground people, put them onto their own layer with careful selection and so forth, and then clean the background out and then put them back on again. But that's not needed here. I think we can do this whole thing with just straight work. Now, I can't really use the subject select. It's going to be giving me odd results because of the overlapping people in here, so that's no good. I also can't use the content aware fill because the people are right against the heads of our foreground subject and we'll get very strange results there as well. So this one really is just going to be about using the clone stamp tool and that's right over here. Now a few options down here on the clone stamp tool. Sample all layers is useful if you have multiple layers you want to work with. We don't so we can just uncheck that, not important. You can choose your brush style in here. I'll leave mine at a soft edge brush. That should help to hide any edges. Your size will be dependent upon what you need to clean out. And I'll leave the opacity at 100% on this and the mode at normal as well. Now on aligned, this just means that as I'm painting along, it's stamping from areas that move along as well. You really want to have aligned all the time whenever you're using the clone stamp tool. And with the clone overlay, I like showing the overlay so you can see what that is. I'll talk about that or show that in just a second. And you want to have it clipped. I don't like auto hide and I don't like invert overlay. Both those just make it more difficult to work with. So I actually never change these settings. And I leave them at these, which are the defaults for that. Okay, we'll start over on the left hand side. And I'll grab the zoom tool here. We'll zoom in. Go to an easy one first, and that's just this in the middle of this hand. Back to our clone stamp tool. You see the size right now is 30, and that's big enough. Now, whenever you're clone stamping like this in a natural environment, you want to be stamping left to right because of the perspective shift. Up and down, you're going to get some really weird things happening. So always clone stamp left to right or right to left, just horizontal. Pick something which is easy to see, and that goes through what you want to get rid of, like this dark line right here, and just pull that straight through. So I'll start over here. I'll hold the Alt key down, click on that point to choose that point. Now notice how I can see my clone stamp area up here. Before I begin stamping, this is that place that I clicked on. As soon as I begin stamping, it will then stamp that in and follow that along. I'll put this way up here and I'll go along like this. You can see how that works. If you look down where the there's a little plus sign right there, see how that's following along and that's what it's copying up there. That is the aligned. That's what it's doing for us. And then we can see through here. You can see that area right there. That is the show overlay part of that. Okay, I'll just do a control Z and get that out of the way. Let's go back here, re-choose. So right here, Alt and click. Well, straight across now, you can see that line in there. And I'll go up and down and try to match that line up and right, right here looks good. And I can then just go like this and clone stamp over. Sometimes you get a bit of a repeated clone stamp like that. Just do it one more time, same thing. I'll click and then get rid of that last little bit. If you get a duplication happening like these two things here, just take one of those out. There we go. And that cleans that up. Okay, so that's the basics of working with the clone stamp tool. We'll be doing the same technique for the rest of this picture, except that we also have to do some protection masking in here. You hold the space bar down, get this little hand symbol. You can then drag the image around. Now in here, these people are in behind his head. So we need to protect his head as we're doing that stuff in there. So I'm gonna be using the polygonal lasso tool. I'm also not gonna be using refined edge on this because of the way this is working. Refine Edge is not going to do what we need in here because of that background overlap. If I used Refine Edge, we would have all kinds of blurring in here of the background or the foreground, and it just would not work out well. So what we need to do is a very careful selection. I'll zoom in tighter like that. You can almost see the individual pixels at this point, so I'm in pretty tight. Grab our selection tool, and I'll start outside a ways. And then I'll just follow along carefully on the hair and get that shape as best I can. When you're using this tool, make sure you don't click too fast or the 
selection will collapse and you'll have to redo it. You don't want to have that happen. So just take your time and give it a beat in between each click and try to match that hair as best as you can. Also, when you're working here, if it's like an area right here, it's better to be inside or this way as opposed to outside that way. So you want to be inside of your selection more than you want to be outside. If the background is pretty good, then you can try to be just right on that dividing line. There's usually a little bit of a gradient whenever you have foreground to background. You can see it better right down in here. Just a real small couple, three pixel gradient. Try to get right in the middle of that gradient. And again, you want to move this around just a bit. What you don't want to have here is a perfectly straight line. That's going to look fake. So make sure you're doing little short movements here. Vary it, move around a little bit. Right down here, I'll hold the space down and drag this up. You know, I'll just keep on going. And you want to be a ways away from what you want to clone stamp out. And we'll just come down here, down the shirt, just a little ways again, staying just in the middle of that gradient area. And then right about here, I'll now take it out. Space bar again, let's just move our picture over and come way out here. That's because I don't want to be doing any clone stamping over the edge of that selection. That would show. You want all your clone stamping to be in here and not up against these edges. Get your edges out far enough that you won't have that problem. For here, that's okay. But over here, you'd see that edge. All right, let's go back to our clone stamp tool. There's a brush size. It's a bit large now, but I'll start off with this. We'll come right down here, hold the Alt key down. I'll find a spot right there along that horizon line. Alt and click, pull that in. You can see that horizon line right now. You want to match that up and then just pull that straight over as far as you can. Like that. Hold the space bar down and just keep on going down. There we go. When you begin getting back into your figures again here, let's go back up to this line. Come back to where you started from. Hold the Alt key down, grab a new spot. Pull that in, line up that horizon line right here and then brush that straight in and finish off that clone stamp again. Space bar to move the image. There we go. Control zero goes back to fit screen and control D deselects. And that's perfect over here. Let's now take care of this one in between these two heads right there. Same trick, but this will take a much smaller brush and we'll have to be grabbing some stuff from outside here because there's nothing really to grab inside there. So we'll come in tight again, grab that polygonal lasso tool, start way outside here someplace. I'll just start right here. And again, follow right along the edge of that hair. And again, we can't use the refined edge on this. It's not going to work out for us. It's going to mess things up. So I'll have to just do this the hard way. We can try getting a little bit of that wispiness in here. Not much. But luckily, once we have this done, the heads are actually not that large in the picture, large in the frame. So this is going to work out just fine. Here's that space bar again. And right down here. When it's done to the eyelashes down there, at that point, there's really nothing else that matters in there. We've taken care of all that. So I'll come right down here. That area is clean down below there. And we'll follow along. And this time we'll go right up against the edge here of this towel this guy is wearing. You can go a little bit longer strokes here because the towel is pretty straight. There we go. And then again, same thing here. You want to follow along the shape of the hair as much as you can. It's a little bit of a lightness in here. I'm just going to kind of mess that up like that. And up and around. You want to take this up far enough so we can have some space around that image in there. Again, so that the clone stamp doesn't go up against an edge of your selection up in the sky, which would be really obvious. We want to keep that from happening. Okay, one last little bit here and I think we're up far enough away from that head that we can stay inside of that and up and around give yourself some space to work with back to the beginning double click to finish that off and there we go okay let's now back out of this hold the alt key down on your zoom tool to zoom out a bit too far I think right about here is good back to the clone stamp tools come way over here someplace and I'll grab that horizon line right here alt and click Pull that in again, line up your horizon line. There it is. 
And let's get that guy out of there. That easy? Okay. Control D to deselect. Hold the space bar down. We can move over here. Notice how the hair looks just fine. We had no problem in there with that hair. Looks very natural. Okay, space bar. This guy we can just take out. He's easy, nothing around him. So Alt and click on that horizon line. Again, match your horizon line. And let's just quickly clone stamp him out. Notice I'm going back and forth left to right. That's the way you do this when you're working with a horizon like this. In here, same thing. We're going to have to select around this hair and then take out that area. So let's just zoom in down here, zoom tool, and we'll zoom in like that. And I'll start way over here someplace. This side of the hair is pretty straight, so I think we're okay here. There's not that much wispiness in here. Begins right up in here. Looks like the hair is being blown from the wind from the left-hand side of the picture. That's fine. And again, when you're using this tool, don't click too fast or your selection will collapse. You'll have to start over again. You don't want that to happen. Just take your time. Now, when I'm doing this kind of a selection, I'm using a mouse for this. I have my mouse on a smooth mouse pad. It's a hard pad as opposed to being those cloth covered things, which makes this easier to move the mouse. I also have a wrist rest that I'm using. So my hand is resting on the wrist and then I'm moving the mouse with just my fingers. I'm not moving my hand to move the mouse. And that gives me that real good selection. Now right there, I was talking too much and I clicked too fast and it closed the selection. So if that happens, make sure you're down here on add and we'll just come in and add in this next little bit. Luckily, that selection didn't overlap itself. If it overlaps itself someplace, then you have to start it over again. If it doesn't overlap, then you can usually just add in and continue with your selection as we're doing here. It's a little tricky with these really small movements in here, real short selected lines. Very difficult to keep from doing that. So don't worry if that happens, it's okay. It happens to everybody. Happens to me all the time. Hold the space bar down. Let's just move this out a little bit. I'll get just a bit of the shirt down here. You know, away from that figure. There we go. And then back around. You know, come around and come into our selection over here, right hand side, and then be inside the selection and go back to our starting point. And that links those two selections together. And there we go. Okay, his head is now selected. So I need to invert the selection. I want to have the outside area selected. So select and inverse. That takes care of that for us. The reason I went that way is because this whole head is kind of sitting on top of what we're trying to fix in here. And it's back out a little bit. Alt and back out. When you're making selections, what you do is you select the thing that's easiest to select. And then either work with that if that's what you want, or if it's the opposite stuff you want, then just invert your selection. So I always go for the easiest thing to select. Okay, let's go ahead and get rid of these people in here. Clone stamp tool. We're back on our horizon line up here. Alt and click. I'll come in here and I'll find that horizon line right on our hat. That should do it. Should line up. That worked out very well. And just a little bit more up in there, but let's get this side taken care of down here. Just like that. We'll take us over as far as we can. And there's where we're getting into that figure again. This time I'll go over here to the right hand side. Alt click and let's match our horizon again. There it is. And we'll come in and clean up that side. Control D to deselect. Control zero to fit screen. That's all fine. And last little bit over here, this last figure. Straight clone stamp is not overlapping anything. So clone stamp tool. Here's our line again. Just find a line to work with. I'll use this one here. See, there's that line. We'll pull it in, match the line. And then let's just work from there. Now, if it's a real tall figure like this, I may want to come in and do this a couple of times from a couple of different spots. Like right down here, there's another line here. So I'll come down here, alt click, and let's match that line up, which is right about here. There we go. That's all looking good. Just a bit right here. Let's now take some of this blue stuff and I'll pull that straight across and match that in there. So sometimes you may want to readjust your position depending upon what you're stamping out. Okay, back over to here again, Alt-Click, and this matched it over on the 
other side. Finish that off. And then to finish the top part, I'll go back up here to the horizon. Alt and click us, take that. Match the horizon and then work down from that point. And that keeps all the perspective in there looking just fine. Okay, control zero, fit screen. And there we go. There's the background removal. Let's double check this. Bring the background up and show it. There's before, there's after. And I think that works out very well. Okay, if you want to learn more about how to use Photoshop Elements, take a look at my complete training course where I cover everything, how to use every single tool, all the menus, all the panels, everything. You'll find a link for that right down there in the description. Make sure you click like on this video. Don't forget to subscribe. And I'll see you next time.